Thank you for visiting the Delta Electronics Foundation. The Delta Foundation is based in Taiwan. We're dedicated to sustainability, especially as they relate to climate and energy. Today, I'd like to share with you a story on how Delta assisted the reconstruction of a shattered elementary school into one of the first net zero energy campuses in Taiwan. Before the story, I'd first like to share with you something that our founder and chairman, Mr. Bruce Chang, once said. He said, "As a successful enterprise, we should think beyond making profits. We should be the leader in driving positive change in society." This is a story of climate resiliency, of some of the most vulnerable people in some of the harshest climate circumstances. It is also through this process that we created perhaps one of the most compelling lessons. When we talk about resiliency in Taiwan, the most affected group is the indigenous community. The indigenous people are socially and economically vulnerable to begin with. Most of them live in the mountains, therefore they're more likely to become climate refugees. We all know that relocations associated with disasters impact not only their livelihoods, traditions, culture, but sometimes resulting in the lessening of their heritage or identity. In 2009, Taiwan was hit by Typhoon Marakot. It brought over 2,300 millimeters of rain in 48 hours. The world record of rain in two days is in fact 2,400. It took away the lives of more than 600 people and displaced tens of thousands of people. Many of them, you might call them, climate refugees. This used to be the Mingchuan Elementary School. It was located near the area where the typhoon hit the hardest. Nobody expected that the typhoon would bring this much rain. It was later on that we realized Marco brought the most rain throughout history. In fact, the next morning. After the typhoon, on August 8, they will then find out that one of the three villages have completely disappeared. 426 people perished from massive landslides. The National Geographic described it as the Pompeii of Taiwan. The elementary school was covered by massive mudslides as well. Even the ferns have grown into the classroom. Not surprisingly, the laughter of the children is nowhere to be heard. In fact. Thirteen other schools have experienced similar trauma. Delta adopted one of the schools where we will construct one of the first green buildings that can adapt to extreme weather events for one of the most vulnerable communities. We decided we wanted to help as much as we can and as soon as we can. This decision was fully endorsed by our founder Bruce. Because of his belief, we responded immediately to the disaster. Where Delta went in and adopted the rebuilding of an elementary school that primarily educates the indigenous people. At that time, we had three ambitious goals in mind. A, we wanted to build an elementary school for them. B, we wanted the building to become a shelter for future natural disasters. Last but not least, we wanted the building to be a sustainable green building. It turns out that there were many unforeseeable challenges. For starters, there are the more intangible ones: politics, for example. There were many, many different stakeholders. There's the local government, and then there's the central government. Sometimes they don't see eye to eye with each other. There's also the indigenous community, and then there's the old school. The old school consists of parents, students. Teachers and the principal. There is also the renewable energy and LED department of Delta. There is also the Green Building Research Institution, and then there is the architect. One of the stakeholders was Principal Wu. He took on the challenging task of locating missing students due to relocation to temporary shelters. He once said, "Education shall not be stopped." By storms, there were communications with different stakeholders, including tribes, parents, teachers, governments, and funding entities. You might wonder why does going to a relocated school require so much convincing? 
Now let's look at the topography and geography of the area what we're talking about. As you can see, the old school and the community were located at areas were close to the riverbanks and near the mountains. We found a safer location that's still in the community but of higher altitude to rebuild the school. Our mission was in fact away from disaster but not away from the village. As one could probably imagine, the physical challenges associated with the rebuilding can be immense. Almost all the bridges have been destroyed by the typhoon. And that's the very reason why we worked really closely with geological experts. The second stakeholder that I wanted to mention is architect Guo. Guo is a renowned green building architect in Taiwan. Delta has had very close relationship with the green building architect, and it was important for him as well as us, that the relocation considers both indigenous needs and incorporates environmental justice. In fact, he said, we didn't want to just rebuild a school that will only be destroyed again. We want to make buildings that can coexist with nature. Over 180 days have passed. The new school was launched in February 2012. It has then received the highest green building level and the campus is expected to become the first net energy school in Taiwan. As you can see here, this is an aerial photographer filming the entire school. The wind turbines are spinning, the solar panels are working. Before we started the plan, we had three goals in mind. We wanted to rebuild a school. Here you can see the classrooms and the hallway of the campus. But we also wanted to build a shelter. How can the school become a shelter during the typhoon season? We designed an open space for public use. For example, meals, information transfer. There are also water tanks and food storage that can sustain the whole village of roughly 300 people for up to a week. In some ways, we built both climate resilience and emotional resilience. Interesting enough, the right picture you see here, the people there took it to a different level. The elders host storytelling competitions during the shelter times, and that's their very entertainment inside the shelter. Last but not least, it turns out that it is also a sustainable green building. Here you can see hope and pride in the eyes of the kids. Because of the successful rebuilding of the school, the faith of the villagers has also been rebuilt. Before all the rebuilding started, a woman in the community told us something that supported us along the way. She said, we are not here to rebuild what we have lost. We are here to rebuild our future. Thank you for visiting us today. If you'd like to learn more about the Delta Electronics Foundation, please follow us on Twitter at Lois C.